Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dust for Faith. Welcome to episode 26 of Factorial Forex, your 15-minute Factorial Fix. We have just finished building a red track, utensils, items, and we're looking to see what's going on with our bus. Green circuits seem a little threadbare, and we are just looking at stuff again. Getting more track, red track, we're going to go ahead and pump the throughput on the copper, because that's fun. And the reason I redid it is because I put them all backwards. <laughs> Big surprise, no? Whole lot of copper going on. So yeah, we are full, 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 full of copper. Oh my goodness. It's like Copper City out here. I don't think I do the whole copper line. I think I just do this part in. Let me, I don't recall, I'll have to watch. No, maybe I do. <laughs> hadn't it, I thought I hadn't. But the fun part is I actually missed some, uh, some iron. No, there we go. And that really helps. See, uh, even the splitters and the underground belts operate at the obviously the same speed as their color. Well, maybe not obviously. Uh, so the yellow is slowest, red is faster, and blue is the fastest. But I, I kind of wonder what kind of system you have if you're using blue blue conveyor belt. That's got to be crazy. Fun fact: according to the the developers of the game, apparently using conveyor belts is a lot more taxing on your CPU than using, say, robots. Don't know why, but that's that's their assertion. To me, I find that kind of interesting, actually. Ooh, deja vu. So, just looking at stuff. Oh, that's right, I want to speed up, uh, I want to speed up my blue science. So I throw in a whole bunch of the, um, which columns, the level two speed things. Oh my gosh, my brain is shut down. Pardon me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speed modules, thank you. Oh my goodness. So we're heading out here. Checking the copper flow. Copper's flowing nice. And it fills up and the iron's doing good too, so we're watching that. Ah, that's right. So all I do is I run red, the red belt here, so it speeds everything up, so we get a lot more compression and everything. What are dead bugs? So it looks like there's, uh, how do you like that crazy path they took? It's just like wandering around. So it looked like there were, um, there's a base over in the corner, but I, I don't know if it's an echo or what. I have no idea what it is. There's a little tiny base there. Uh, that's probably a base that's going to grow. Those things only appear at bases. They don't appear anywhere else. That's why I put up the victory pole on them. It's like, whatever. Let's get out of here, yo. The reason I'm using two different types of power poles is those big poles offer, there's a lot longer distance between where you can connect them and so forth. You have a, a greater distance. So the smaller ones, you have to use smaller gaps, of course. So I'm looking up here and I'm like, ah, something's not right. It's just something's wrong, and I, I don't know what it is. So, I'm just basically looking at, you know, everything. What do we got here? How are things running? You know, I'm looking at science is faster. Not a whole lot faster, but it's faster, which is good. So eventually we'll get follower robot count 12 because we use that. I, I should have stopped at 10. But I go to 12. Because 
you know, 11, it's more than 10. 12 is more too, as well. I think I stop fairly soon. Now this is the part where I'm kind of wondering, what the hell am I supposed to be doing? This rocket's not building. Uh, so I'm, I'm changing. I'm looking at these. I'm like, do I need to build the high advanced versions? I'm like, no. Turret creep works just fine. But I'm looking at them kind of going, well, should I do something different? You know, the rockets... I honestly think the rocket's supposed to be this slow. I have no idea that it's not building because I took apart all the stuff that makes its parts. So, <laughs> yeah. This is where I'm... I, oh, that's right. I decided to build flying robots because I'm like, well, let's screw all the robots. I mean, we're going to be here a while. Let's see if we can't mess with robots. So again, I didn't start the research because I wanted the uh, I wanted Blue Science to build a backup, and there's no hurry. I mean, there's nothing. I don't need anything. So I'm looking at these. I'm like, how can I build this guy? Because this this setup isn't really that good for uh, mass producing robot engines or flying frames. Excuse me. Now, gear wheels and pipes are extremely low in cost for materials, so to speak. It's one iron per pipe. It's one it's one iron plate per pipe. It's one iron plate per gear wheel. Ridiculously, ridiculously easy to use. So the reason I'm doing this is, if I recall, let me think here. Oh yes, I'm gonna I, I'm going to combine some stuff. That's right, because the engines need steel. And the and if you noticed, I put the did I put them backwards. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I just I don't know. So I've decided I don't want just two engine things. I want four because these things take these things are very slow to build. So by doing this, I'm going to guarantee pretty much that everything runs a lot faster. Is that blinking making you crazy? It's making me crazy. There we go. And now everything runs underground. Now, I'm going to try... I'm going to show you a technique... Uh, well... It's a technique. Uh, there's a gentleman out there named uh, Cilantro Gamer who did something called um, braiding, and it's a very interesting technique. Um, what it involves is using two different types of underground belt to move products along. So. Um, it's really interesting, and I have trouble getting it right. Then I realize that you have to use different colored, un you have to use different colors of underground uh, belt. Otherwise, it doesn't work. This is when I start first looking at how am I going to get this stuff going here. So this is my first attempt at braiding. And now my second attempt at braiding. And this doesn't work because it's all the same color, so it all links up. I have to switch to red belt. I'm sort of... At this point, I'm, I'm, I'm like, hmm. A little frustrated right here because it's not working. It's, everything seems weird, and I've seen the technique before. I know it's supposed to work, but it just doesn't. Then I realize, oh, wait.
then again, I might just be ready to disassemble the whole thing, and then I go, wait. And then I put it all back. Because, <laughs> you know, there. There it is. And that's the braiding right there. And you can run entire lines that way. Uh, I've seen it. Again, Cilantro Gamer is the one who uh, I watched doing. I was like, this is fascinating. And it works. Because what we're doing is, is the engines are being placed on the red. Uh, they're being placed on the, on the red belt. And they're going underneath. But somehow they're missing the yellow belt. Just the way things work, man. I just work here. Poorly. Admittedly, but I just, I just work here. So. Uh, so I, I have to move the lubricant because that's, uh, that's what, one of the things you use to make the, uh, the red hoochamadoozies. Oh, right. The, uh, <laughs> the, the electric engines. I've made regular engines there. Uh, with So these are the electric engines. Now, when you have to use liquids, they for the inserters, they only insert from the top on the blue ones. It's kind of annoying, really. So, <laughs> there's not much you can do. It's like, really? Is this what I have to deal with? All right, fine. But it's pretty easy to, uh, otherwise, to have them run. I mean, there we go. Chunk it along. So, next I'm going to have to build the robot frames themselves. So I need to bring down, I think it's batteries and what else, something else. Oh, I'm moving too fast. There you go, batteries and battery steel and circuits. Wow, everything. And if I recall, I use the same underground belt method. Now, a lot of people already have setups for all these construction things. And it's like, I was just reading one guy on Reddit. He's, oh, it's 13, everything, every assembly structure he makes is 13 spaces wide 13 belts wide essentially and I was flabbergasted that's just some ridiculous planning uh, but that's what this is it's a puzzle to make the most efficient factory possible it's this is a, it's just a really ridiculously amazing game that's all I can say <laughs> So there's the things I need. That's when I go, oh, I can't do that. Oh. So I'm going to have to move. Oh, I managed to make it work. That's right. Ha, 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 ha. Go me. <laughs> Yay. So that's all, that's all you need here. And then, then to make the different kinds of, of uh, robots. There. How do you like that? I do a reverse version. Um, to make the different kinds of robots, you just have to add, a, like, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think, logistics robots, construction robots are a uh, flying robot frame, and I think some green circuits, and I don't remember what the other one are. But here I'm just building the frames. That's all I'm doing. So, and there we go. Robot frames. Yay! And here, this is what I'm, I'm just... I'm like, I don't get it. Why is it this building? I, I look through, everything's running. I'm not having any issues with sure. the stuff. I'm just like, what is going on? So, because again, I thought you built, you put 10 of them and you're done and it builds. No, it's 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 10 of each item for every 1% of build. So it builds 100 pieces and you have to do 10 of each. So, all right, we're wrapping this up, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for joining me for the latest episode of Factorial 4X, your Factorial 15-minute fix. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a good night, and bye-bye.